Hi, it's Anne. Thanks for stopping by. Are you ready for something really different? Because we're doing something really different today. Um, I will explain it to you as I am cutting up this master board. Now you'll remember recently we did some gel printing. And let me make certain you can see here. You can see in this collage, these are little pieces of some of the gel printing that we did. They're barely recognizable in their smaller state, but I love how they came out and I think they give such a nice energy to this collage. I just pasted all of these things um, onto an ugly piece of scrapbooking paper. Did a little bit of mixed media uh, on top, a little bit of uh, painting of those squares uh, with some white around them, speckled them with some, uh, a few splashes of black acrylic paint, and you know, there's a little bit of music page uh, uh, mixed in there. But the rest of all of the, anything that's not a music page is some of the gel printing that we did together the other day, or that I did shortly after getting off camera. I did take a few um, uh, a few of the pieces closer to completion. I'm going to cut this into pieces that are three by four. I can, if I've done the math correctly, I can get 12 uh, out of uh, out of this. And as, and I'm just going to cut them as they, they're, they're gonna turn out how they're going to turn out as far as their orientation. I have the big guillotine here which I know is not entirely on camera, but uh, as I cut, I am going to tell you why we are doing this project today. There's four. We are doing this because I am going to be making little tags, little pieces of art that I am going to leave around my neighborhood. Now this seems like a kooky thing to do, does it not? Not something we would do every day. Those are my four, and now I'm going to cut them in threes. And yes, sometimes I'm going to be cutting right across that mixed media piece, and I'm just going to have to be okay with that. We are not here to fret about those details, because these little pieces are going to be really transformed into some interesting little pieces of art. How did I come across this idea? Well... It's no thanks to me, let me tell you. It is, I'm gonna pause for a second and show you. Last summer, uh, do you have these, do you have little free libraries in your neighborhood? They're like little structures that people have in their, um, uh, in their yards, their front gardens, and you know, they're not everywhere, but every couple of blocks you run across a household that has a little free library. They're sort of constructed like a mailbox in that they're on a post, but instead of the mailbox on top of the post, there's like a small cabinet that's filled with books. And you can drop books off for people to give away. It's not a lending library. You don't have to return things. They're just there for people to share books. And there's other little free libraries for things other than books. There's free libraries for seeds, uh, for toys, for games, for clothes. You know, there's all they're, they're all over um, the place. Maybe they're in your neighborhood as well. I hope they are because they're really, really cool. Anyway, I stopped to look at a little free library uh, one time in the summer when I was walking around the neighborhood and I found this plastic bag that was just in there with this little note that said, oh, there you are. And if you found this note, you've also found a little piece of art left just for you. And in here was this, I think it's a little watercolor. Uh, clearly it was some sort of a larger painting that somebody had cut uh, into these smaller pieces. Look, it's reversible. Isn't that a sweet little piece of delightful art just to find in the neighborhood, just to bring a smile to your face? You know, you can keep it, hide it on, or, or uh, hide it again, pass it on, and it's just a little salute to creativity and making people uh, making, making people feel good. And I thought this was just such a delightful little thing. I have it here in my craft room with this, um, with this little note, and I thought, this is what I am going to do uh, with my gel prints. Um, I mean, I could have done it uh, with, with anything, but I thought I'm going to make little pieces of art to just sort of leave around the neighborhood and hopefully make somebody else feel just as good as this a not wonderful anonymous neighbor um, made me feel good a couple months ago when, um, when I discovered that at the little free library. So we're just going to make some of these. The nice thing is um, 
they're also, they would make, if, if you have no such uh, beast in your neighborhood as a, you know, as a little free library, um, or, or if you're just not inclined to be, uh, um, uh, to be doing this in terms of, you know, scattering your artwork um, around for uh, uh, people to, uh, to find, um, these are things that could go very, very easily into a junk journal as well. And I decided, oh, let me see how, what was the actual size on, uh, on this one? Four and a half by three and a quarter. This is a nice proportion. I decided to make mine a little bit smaller, the three by four. It's still a little bit bigger than the, the artist trading cards, which are generally, I think, uh, two and a half by three and a half. Those just seemed a little small to me for this purpose. So I am I just cut mine four by three because I could use every bit of a 12 by 12 master board. And um, then we'll have a nice stack of things to work with. And honestly, I've kind of already started this. I did another master board a couple of days ago and started making a batch <clears throat> of these. And I really had fun with the design. And when Dan and I went on our neighborhood walk this morning and stopped at our neighborhood coffee shop, I took a few of these um, along and it, it, they, they were, you know, I, I put them in, in um, uh, already used uh, uh, plastic like acetate to little bags. This one doesn't have much on it, but that's okay. We will dress it up. And uh, I left one in the coffee shop. I left one in the little free library. I left one in um, uh, just by a neighbor's fence because it wasn't raining today. And uh, I thought they would be they would be fun for people to uh, to find. Let's carry these through to completion, not all of them, but you can kind of see how I'm designing these. And maybe this is something you'd like to do, but these would also be just fine um, in, a, um, uh, in a journal as well. So let's see, which one do we want? Because I'm going to be gluing some things on top. This one is nice and colorful. Set those aside and I am going to do a little quarter rounding, not quarter rounding, corner rounding, quarter rounding. I'm thinking of the stuff you put around your woodwork. Okay, this is a little blank, but we're going to be putting something on top of it. I went to some of my other gel plate or gel printed uh, pieces, and I just drew with a white um, acrylic pen. I just drew some hearts, free-handed hearts, uh, put a little um, uh, um, double, uh, black double-inked uh, um, pen marking around them. And you know, these are just out of some of those other painted papers. So I, hearts are, I did hearts only because, you know, they're cheerful and they're easy, um, easy to, uh, easy to draw and easy to cut. So I just put a bunch of them together here and maybe I'll choose one of the blue ones since I have a little bit of red here. Um, I also wanted there to be some kind of a word or some kind of a saying on there, but I didn't want it to look like a greeting card. I will do some inking while I'm talking to you. I didn't want it to look like it, you know, you know, said, you know, happy Thanksgiving or thinking of you or anything like that. I wanted it to be something that was, that looked like a little piece of abstract contemporary art. And as I was looking, and I also thought these, these needed something. I was looking through some book pages and um, I started, I realized I have, you probably have a bunch of old novels too. They're so great to use in um uh, uh, in crafting. And I was just, I, I was ready to tear out a few pages um, in this old novel, maybe to put some uh, uh, pieces of book page uh, here. And I started reading some of the text and there were just some really kind of funny lines that would have been appropriate for a novel written in the 1940s, 1943. Um, West End Nurse, Ooh, a career gal. Uh, <laughs> and I, th I thought, you know what? I'm going to just start um, cutting out some lines from this novel and incorporating them into the artwork. 
And here is another, here is one. I, I, I glued them onto strips of cardstock that I did some white, black cardstock that I did some spattering on. And they're like, there's one. She loves to cook. She concocts appetizing things for us. Isn't that just sort of a funny kind of a thing uh, uh, to have in a book? And you can just sort of ironically or amusingly or whimsically put that into a little piece of artwork. And so I started, I, I cut out all of these different lines from this novel and I have these little strips of, uh, of cardstock that I can start putting on these little cards that I can just leave around the neighborhood. Look at this, there was no reason to suppose. You know what, you, you fill it, you fill it in, you fill it in. It's just, it, it just sort of, you know, raises, you know, makes you think, you know, how do you want to complete that? Maybe she wasn't so hopeless after all. Aw, that's a sweet one. So I have all kinds of just, you know, just funny little, not all funny, but just sort of quirky things. You look like a million. Neighbors stared and crowded close. Nothing particularly, you know, I'm, I'm not in any way making fun uh, uh, of the author. I just think that this is just sort of a kind of a quirky and a whimsical way uh, to be using some of... Um, uh, some of these little things. Um, let me see. I, I'm, I'm, now I'm already starting to overthink it. So I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to start gluing a few of these things together. And I want to show you how I'm constructing them. And uh, I'm using Fabri-Tac glue on these little strips with the book quotes on them, or the Fabri-Fix Fabri uh, glue, I'm sorry, because I want that to hold. She loves to cook. She concocts appetizing things for us. Wouldn't this be kind of fun just to maybe run across and find in your, uh, Anne is overthinking. We're going with the blue. I'm using the Fabrifix because this is paint that is on this uh, on this surface, and uh, I feel like that's going to work a little bit better. Even though, oh, this stuff has all the strings. Using my finger to smear that around. There we go. And you can see I I put down the brown paper on my work surface again because I knew I was going to be getting messy with the glue here. And where are my scissors? The, the, with these things being kind of kooky and a little bit weird, I feel like it gives us license to decorate them in kind of a kooky little bit of weird um, way. And this is what I'm doing with them. Each one of these, I mean, you could just use this as a journal card, you know, all by itself. It would be fine, great in a journal, actually. Um, but I decided to back them for this giveaway purpose, this little free found art exercise. I decided just to back them with a piece of music paper. I feel like if it was blank on the back or you said, you know, please journal on this or something like that, well, that gives the finder a, a, a task to do. I want them to just be sort of delighted and surprised by this. And this is the way that I've been doing them. I've been taking a piece of vellum that is just a quarter inch all the way around larger than my base piece and sort of sandwiching that vellum in between my papers of my little piece of art. So again, because this is vellum, I'm using the stronger glue and I'm getting that vellum centered. on my little three by four art card. 
And then I'm coming back in with another bunch of glue and putting my backing on it. I will put the text to the little note in my uh, description box. You are absolutely welcome to use it. I frankly, when I, I put mine together, I completely copied uh, the one that the delightful artist uh, left for me anonymously in the summer because I thought, um, I thought it was great. You know, there was just something so sweet about, you know, finding that note that said, there you are. Yes, here I am. All right, now, what I also enjoyed doing with these is putting kind of a little pull on them. Um, I will show you how this one turned out. This is one I did with a different master board. But I put, I, I kind of like this little pull because if you were using it in a journal, it would be nice to be in there. But also like if you were putting this like on a, you know, bulletin board in your kitchen or on your, um, you know, on your refrigerator or just, you know, setting around, it just gave a little bit of visual interest. So what I used for that uh, tag or that tag pull, and this was literally something I had sitting around uh, my desk, I used some of this stuff. How did this stuff start out? Well, do you ever see have gift have bags, paper get bags like this that have these sort of twisty handles? Well, if you cut those off and untwist them, this is what you'll get. And it's a great craft supply. So I've I've worked my way through using a lot of it, but what I've been doing is this. I've been cutting them into kind of usable lengths. This is going to be about in thirds. And then folding, well, that might be a little bit short, but I've been folding it before I put it down. And then I've been using just a little bit of art glitter glue because that works well for this purpose. And I think I'm going to put this this pull over on this side. I'm not worried about centering them. There's my little pull and I'm putting that on that wet glue and then I'm scooting it into the glue and kind of pinching it down with my fingernails. Oh, I can tell I've had way too, you can tell I stopped for coffee in the, uh, in the neighborhood today. I'm, a little bit too much caffeine in my system. There we go. So now because I've folded it already, that fold remembers where it is and that's going to be, it's going to land with the ends theoretically being opposite each other here. And scooting that in so it's just pinched a little bit so it sort of flares out at the top. And then we're going to secure the whole thing with a staple, because that's something kind of fun and unartistic, but useful. And there is our little piece. What do you think of this? And then it just pairs with a little note. over here. I put them together in a, in a little plastic packaging and then just left this in the coffee shop. I forget what the one said. Uh, I think it said something about coffee, actually, the one that I left in the coffee shop today. But it's just, the, hopefully by now, I mean, we left it like about 90 minutes ago. I hope somebody's found it by then or by now, and is going, oh, look at this. I have a little piece of art. And maybe that person like me will think, you know, I think I feel like doing something like this. There need to be no names attached, no instructions, no requests. It's just a little something fun to do. Now, you could also just put blank paper on the back and use it for a journal card, and that'd be great, because I love this design of just this little bit of vellum sandwiched in between two cards. Let's go ahead and make a few more. Should we do that? And yeah, we're only 19 minutes in, so we can do a couple more. 
let me not again not overthink I say as I begin to overthink no and just choose one at random this is good when I was doing the spatters on the master bard I had one great big glumpy thing uh, uh, that fell in the middle so we're gonna want to cover that up I'm going to begin by rounding the corners And let's choose, let's choose this one. This is kind of funny. Neighbors stared and crowded close. That's better than this one. She ain't no good, always gallivanting. Yeah, no, we'll save that for another day. What about this one? Sassy, aren't you? Do you think you'd like to find something that said sassy, aren't you? I think I'm gonna stick with neighbors stared and crowded close. Or, no, wait, this one is a little more positive. How about this? There's always plenty, don't worry. That's kind of a nice positive little, little sentiment. Yeah, here's my piece of black cardstock that I spattered with some, a little bit of gesso. So we'll take that from the beginning and just have that nice torn edge. Because it's, it's very easy to mass make these. And that's probably what I'll continue to do this afternoon. Because I think that this is going to air the day after Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving here in the United States. And I just, I kind of like the idea, I, this is just a, a little way to kind of show some appreciation, I think, for, for neighbors, local businesses. Um, I'll, uh, I'll drop a few more off, uh, maybe for some of the shop owners that I know in the neighborhood, um, and maybe they can have one and leave them around their shops uh, for their folks to enhance their shopping experience. And I hope that people are supporting their small businesses this holiday season. I do plenty of big box shopping. You know, I order online when I do when I have to order. Uh, but I also am, uh, you know, in, enjoy Dan and I really enjoy, you know, supporting small local businesses. When we lived in Corning, New York, we had a small local business and Small Business Saturday was a really important day for us. There we go. Maybe I'll put this one at a little bit of a tilt. And there, I like that. After I've done a couple, I'm going to go in because I'm not quite finished decorating. These are kooky enough that they tend to do really well with like sequins or, uh, uh, you know, a little bling on them. Uh, just something that just kind of looks a little, little shiny, a little out there, a little extra. And um, I, I, I love that about these. I think I might show you how I'm doing these. Um, these hearts as well. You can see this is a uh, one of the gel prints that I did on a book page. And let's just use this little scrap. This is nice. There's a white acrylic ink pen. Nothing special about this. Doesn't need to be even, doesn't need to be perfect. Anybody can draw a heart. And I do another one here while I'm in the neighborhood. Got room to make a little bit of a wider one here. let that dry because I want that ink to dry before I go in and draw my <clears throat> my black on there. I cut this off and I think I'd like to use one of these blue hearts here. 
Um, but I want to let that dry. So let me go ahead and finish the rest of this. It's one of my little music pages. I'm going to double check and make certain that I did in fact get those the right a companion size and I did. Yeah, so le leaving little pieces of uh, public art around, I, I just think it's a great idea. Makes me think of something I participated in uh, early in the summer called Game of Shrooms. I will put a link to the videos that I had about Game of Shrooms. It was a worldwide event where artists and crafters would leave mushroom-themed art just in public places for people to find and enjoy and be delighted for uh, with. And it took place all around the world on one day. It was June or something. I forget what day it was. Anyway, I did a whole mushroom journal. I loved it so much. I'm going to do Game of Shrooms again next year. But I might I might not do a whole journal next year. I might um, just so I have time to make multiple pieces of art instead of just one. I might do smaller like little little cards like this. here. Going through a little more of the Fabri-Tac or 3-in-1 glue today than I normally do. But it's the right adhesive for this particular job. Okay, let's create our heart. I think I'm going to use this one. Is the Sharpie working? Just a little jiggly line around here. We want it to look hand drawn. We want to make certain people know in a world of artificial intelligence, there's nothing artificial about this little piece of artwork. Done by human hands, left with human heart. Yeah, I've often wondered, you know, who the neighborhood artist is that, uh, that left me that, um, that little watercolor piece last summer. I just, um, I just thought it was just so sweet. Got a couple small ones here. Do I have another tiny one? There we go. Yeah, let's put three on there. Yes, I like that. Um, This glue is not always well behaved when it comes out of its bottle. And it's so expensive, I hate to waste any of it, so I'm always going in and grabbing some with, <laughs> with my finger so that I can apply it before it dries up. Sometimes I get so much of this glue on my finger that later I go to like touch my phone or something and my phone doesn't pick up my finger, uh, my finger ID on some of my sign in things if I have glue on there. All right, now, there we go. This is all set. This is another thing. If things look like they're just a little bit dull, I like to come back in I like to, like I've been doing this for ages, in the last 24 hours since I've been doing these. Um, I've enjoyed coming in and gluing a few sequins. And for the sequins I've found, just a little dab of art glitter glue will do just fine. And again, these are kooky little 
kooky little things. We're not worried about we're not worried about them, you know, matching a a beautifully thought out decor. We're not worried about Oh, we're not worried about anything, quite frankly. Oh, there's a smaller one. Just a little bit of bling. Something to make this stand out. And let's do a third one. There we go. And let's put a little a little pull on the top. That other one was a little bit on the short side. So I think I'm going to cut this one just a tiny bit tiny bit longer. And folding it, I found because these things don't always fold so easily. So if I fold them before I put them down, then that helps me to refold. And I think that this would be nice here. I kind of like them offset. Not perfect, not symmetrical. Sort of in keeping with the kookiness of the project. And smoosh those into the glue. And since I'm going to be stapling, not everything has to be held down. The staple will reinforce. I know just how far down to put that little bead of glue. And we'll push it in so it's fairly symmetrical with how we have it on the front. You could leave it like that if you like, but I just really like having a staple. It just seems like, you know, a nice little practical thing to have. And elevating the humble staple to a presence in this little piece of art. There's always plenty, don't worry. And if you do something like this, there will always be, <laughs> there will always be plenty. Uh, plenty of um, joy, plenty of um, uh, plenty of creativity, plenty of interesting things um, uh, going on in your neighborhood. I'm going to put a little sequin there and there. that one and maybe one smaller one down here. There we go. So perhaps you are the one in your household that loves to cook and con concocted appetizing things for your family. Uh, perhaps you were somebody who, um, uh, who assisted with that effort. Perhaps you are somebody that uh, uh, doesn't observe American Thanksgiving because you're not, in, you're not in the States. Uh, but I thought that was kind of nice. Uh, and I think this will be fun to leave around for people. I'm just going to keep making these. And, um, I hope this is something that you give a, a, a try, um, either for your own journals with something, you know, a journaling space on the back or to leave, um, to leave around in your neighborhood. So you can say to your neighbors, oh, there you are. I'll leave this, uh, this text in my description box. Thanks for watching, guys. Have fun with this. Bye-bye.